Hi there everybody, this is Brian back again with another tutorial from 100% PowerPoint. And today we're going to be learning how to do a bouncing ball animation. So you'll see that when I hit the space key here, you get this nice bounce effect. However, as usual, you didn't come here to watch an animation, you came here to learn how to do it. So I'm going to hit escape here, and I'm going to create a new slide. Because as usual, I like to do things from scratch. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually create our shapes. So we're going to go up to shapes here and we're going to select oval. Hold down shift and drag down. It gives you a nice ball. Go up to shape outline and remove the outline. Next, hold down control and shift, left click and drag down. And what you're going to want to do is get this nice and flush with the bottom of that first circle. And for now, we're going to keep both of these visible, and I'll show you why you want to do this step in a second. But finally, we're going to hold down Control and Shift one more time, and left click and drag this, and it should snap nicely in the middle there. Go up to the top here, hold down Control, and we're going to drag this one down and what you want to do is make this a, a much more stretched circle. Sorry about that. And this is the beginnings of our shadow. So for this one we're going to right click, go to format shape, and we're going to make the fill a gradient. And you're going to want to remove any of these, um, these extra pieces here go ahead and drag them down so that you just have the two outside pieces and you're going to want to make both of these black like so and on the right hand side we're going to take that transparency up to 100 and on the left hand side we're going to take the transparency up to we'll say 65 finally if you go up a few levels, you'll see this uh, this gradient type here. We're going to change it from linear to path. And go up to a range and send to the back. Next, select your two remaining blues. Hold down shift and select them. Right click and go to group. And we actually have the makings of our balls. These are basically the only shapes that we really need to use. And the final thing we're going to do before we start animating is we just want to center these as best we can. So I'm going to select everything go and drag it towards the center and then one more time just try to center it vertically as well. So now we're ready to animate. So to get this animation started, we're going to select our ball, go up to Animations, Add Animation, and we're going to select Grow Shrink. Go ahead and turn on the Animations pane, and right click on that animation, go up to Effect Options, and we're going to go to Size, and we're going to change this to 50%, so go ahead and delete that one. Hit Tab, and we want it to scale just vertically crank that smooth end all the way up, hit auto reverse and go to timing. And then on timing we're just going to change the duration to 0.15 seconds. So I'm going to take this into slideshow view for a second so you can see why we did these two circles. Typically what happens is when an object scales it scales from the center of that object. So if this was just a circle, it would actually scale from the center right here. However, because we group these two together, I'm going to hit uh, the space key, and you'll see that what happens is that it actually scales down using this as the bottom anchor point. So I'm going to escape out of here, and now that you see why I did this, you can uh, select this bottom one, so click on the uh, blue ball here, and then one more time click on it and in your transparency in your format shape palette just go ahead and take that all the way up to 100 because now you don't need to see it anymore and one more time I'm going to take it into slideshow mode just so you can see what happens when you make that invisible so I'm gonna hit the space key 
and there you go. Next, I'm going to apply a motion path onto this, so select the ball again, go up to Add Animation, and go down to Lines here towards the bottom, and go up to Effect Options, and we're going to hit Up. And you want to grab this end point here, and let's drag this up a little bit higher. So we want to get it up almost as if it's going to go off screen. And now go into your Animations pane, right click on this, and we're going to go to Effect Options again. And this time we're going to go ahead and crank this smooth end all the way up again and we're going to turn on auto reverse we're going to go to timing and we want to set this up to happen after previous and I think a good amount of time we'll say 0.3 seconds hit tab and you're done with this so go ahead and hit OK and I'm going to take this into slideshow mode again so you can see the effect here so hit that space key and you can see it goes up and has a little bit of that uh, hover and then drop back down. So I'll escape out of here. And next, what you're going to want to do is go back up to Add Animation again. And we're going to do Grow Shrink again. Right click on it, go to Effect Options, and this time for size we're going to make it 75% still just vertically, smooth end all the way up to the top again, auto reverse, timing, go to start and you want this to also start after and we're going to set this one with a duration of 0.15 seconds again. Hit OK and I'm going to keep on going back and forth the slideshow mode just so you can see the beginnings of what we're building here. So I'm going to hit the space key again and now you see that it you know has that little bit of a squish hops up and then squishes back down as it hits the ground. So we're going to insert a few more bounces in here before we start working with the shadow. So once again go up to add animation and we're going to go to line down here, go up to effect, and we're going to do up. And if you click on this endpoint here of this uh, new motion path, I just want to drag it down to somewhere kind of in between the beginning and ending of the previous motion path because as each bounce occurs you want it to lose a little bit of momentum due to inertia. And we're going to right click, go to effect options, smooth end all the way up to the top, auto reverse, timing, and we want this to once again be after. And if you remember what we did was a uh, 0.3 seconds for this first one, so due to that loss of uh, momentum we're going to change the, the duration. So each time we add a bounce let's take off 0.5 seconds, so or 0 0.05 seconds, sorry. So now we're going to make it 0.25 instead of 0.3 and hit OK. We're going to add another Grow Shrink. Right click on it, go to Effect Options, go to Size, and this time instead of doing the 75, we're going to make it 85. Hit Tab, and we want to make that vertical, smooth end, and auto reverse go to timing and once again after and for duration we're going to keep this at 0.15 for now and hit OK. And One more time let's take it into slideshow mode and you can see what we're building here. So I hit the space key and now you can see we have that bounce effect. So let's add one more bounce for good measure which means we just need to go up to Add Animation and we're going to add that line one more time and Effect Options, let's go to Up and we're going to select that new motion path and let's drag this one down and we're going to set it up to about here. 
going to right click on that motion path, go to effect options, smooth end, you guessed it, auto reverse, we go to timing, after previous, once again, I'm sure you figured that out, go to duration, and this time, let's go ahead and make this 0.2 seconds. Hit tab, and OK. We're going to add one more grow shrink because once again, once it hits the ground, you want that little bit of elasticity. So we're going to right click on this, effect options, and at last we're going to do 95 tab, just vertically, smooth end all the way to the top, auto reverse, timing once again is going to be after and we're going to make our duration still 0.15. Hit tab and OK. So one more time, let's take it in the slideshow mode. I'm going to hit the space key and now you can see that you have this bounce effect. And I'm going to do that one more time, but I want you to pay attention to the base of the ball here. So if I hit the space key, you'll notice that the shadow's not really doing much, which, uh, I mean, you want you want it to actually react as if it's actually in a, uh, a plane or, you know, something. Give, give that illusion that this is a real shadow. So I'm going to hit Escape here, and I'm going to select our shadow. And up here at Add Animation, I'm once again going to go to Grow Shrink and I'm going to right click and go to effect options and what you want to do is you want to match the size to the size of kind of the uh, bounce that you had done so I believe in the first place what we did was 50 percent so let's go ahead and remove that one but this time let's keep it to scale both horizontally and vertically so you can hit enter drag the smooth end all the way up to the top and go to auto reverse. Go ahead and go to timing and this time instead of after previous we're going to select with previous. We're going to go to duration here and we want this to be as long as that motion path we had created so the first one was 0.3 seconds. Go ahead and hit enter and now you can drag this new animation up to below this first motion path. And once again, I'm going to put it in a slideshow mode so you can see what's happening here. So pay attention to the base. And you see that now it changes uh, size. So I'm going to escape because we just need to add a couple more of these uh, scale effects in order to give the illusion that this ball is um, actually in a physical space. So we're going to go up to Add Animation, go to Grow Shrink, right click on it, Effect Options, we're going to go to Size, and if you remember correctly, the next size we did was 75%. Hit Enter, go to Smooth End, take it all the way up to the top there, Auto Reverse, and we're going to Timing. Timing, once again, we want to do with Previous. And for the duration, remember that we took off 0.05 seconds for each bounce. So we're going to do that with this one as well. So now it should be 0.25 seconds. And you can hit enter. Take this new animation and you want to drag it below the second motion path. Next we're going to go to add animation. We're going to go to grow shrink again. Right click on it and go to effect options and we're going to go down here to size and next it should be 85 percent I believe. So we're going to hit enter, take the smooth end all the way to the top, go to auto reverse, go to timing with previous and this time it should be 0.2 seconds. Hit enter and drag this last one up here to the just below the last motion path. So finally we're going to take this into slideshow mode 
and you can see the animation that we built here. So I'm going to hit space and I want you to pay attention especially to the shadow at the base here. And now as you can see it has that feel that it's actually uh, leaving the uh, ground here. So I'm going to do that one more time so you can really see that. And it's little touches like that that are important. It gives the uh, the illusion of actual, you know, weight or presence in a uh, space. And believe it or not, we are done. This is actually a very straightforward and simple animation. There are just a couple of little tricks. Just remember, you want to have that little circle that's invisible here. It's just helpful for you to be able to trick that anchor point. Uh, if you don't do that, you have to do a lot more kind of uh, planning for where you want those um, those motion paths to begin and end, and it gets it gets pretty cumbersome. I was racking my brain for honestly months trying to figure out how to do this, and when I figured it out, I had to share it with everybody. So that's all I have for you today, but if you have any uh, questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me. Um, if you would like, also hit subscribe and you'll stay up to date with any new uh, tutorials that I may post. Like I say, every time I'm trying to do one of these a month, so any uh, feedback that you might have can only help me to uh, grow this. Some feedback I have heard is that there are some Mac users out there that want to know if these animations are possible on the Mac version of PowerPoint. The simple answer is yes. There is a little bit of a difference in the uh, interface, so I am going to be working on tutorials on the Mac version of PowerPoint as well. So keep an eye out for those in the future. And thank you for watching. This has been 100% PowerPoint.